Real working fusion reactors coming online this decade. One Canadian company has one coming in hot. More on that on today's episode. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm Sean Kenny, and before we get started, I want to ask you to hit the like button to appease the YouTube gods and drop a comment below telling us your thoughts on fusion reactors. We might not get a chance to reply to every comment, but we absolutely read every one. Now, typically we spend a lot of time talking about fission reactors on this show, but today we're talking about fusion. Though the technology is vastly different, it offers the same promise. Little to no waste, clean energy for all, and the ability to expand humanity's reach for the stars. For decades, we were told fusion will always be 30 years away. This may have been true with the approaches that were being conducted in the early 1990s, but things have certainly changed. The biggest paradigm shift is the belief that our biggest and most complicated problems could only be resolved through government programs. You know, like sending people or cargo into space for a fraction of the cost. Then SpaceX happened, and within a few short years, they have gone from a tiny startup with little to no chance to achieving their goals to one of America's greatest success stories. Not only have they breathed in new life into the prospect of humanity's spacefaring future, but they have inspired other entrepreneurs to develop startups to tackle equally challenging problems, like achieving controlled fusion here on Earth. Last year, we did an episode called The Fusion Synergy, which discussed private sector developments in this space, primarily with a recently launched startup called Commonwealth Fusion. This company aims to build compact fusion reactors using highly efficient rare earth magnets and a number of exciting technologies and supply chain materials that can and will be used to drive thorium molten salt reactors reactors like the lifter. However, this is just one company in the fusion space. There are literally dozens of similar startups that are privately funded and have their own unique approach to achieving controlled fusion. But the one that I feel will accomplish this goal near term is General Fusion. Founded in 2002 by physicist and entrepreneur Michael LaBerge, based in Burnaby, Canada, this company has been working towards a novel approach to achieve their goal through a process called magnetized target fusion. Their concept is largely based on the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory's Project Linus, which experimented with an approach to retain the advantages of linear compression to achieve small-scale, high-density fusion. The way magnetized target fusion works is this. You take a large metallic sphere, roughly 10 feet in height. The sphere is filled with a mix of molten liquid lead and lithium. The liquid is then spun, creating a vertical cavity in the center of the sphere. Up top, we have a large plasma injector, which injects a pulse of magnetically confined deuterium tritium plasma fuel into the center of the vortex. This gas is ionized by a bank of capacitors on site. The exterior of the sphere is surrounded by these large steam pistons. Once the plasma has been injected into the vortex, the pistons are used to compress the liquid metal and compress the vortex, thereby compressing the plasma. The compression increases the density and temperature of the plasma to the range where the fuel atoms fuse, releasing energy in the form of fast neutrons and alpha particles. This energy continuously heats up the liquid metal, which is then pumped through a heat exchanger to generate electricity via steam turbine. The process continues throughout, and a portion of the steam generated is reclaimed to run the pistons, which drive the compression. The liquid metal solution offers some key benefits. It allows efficient transfer of heat to drive the turbines. It shields the exterior of the reactor from neutron damage caused by the deuterium tritium fuel. This is really important, seeing as you don't want to damage any sensitive instruments. The liquid metal solution offers some key benefits. It allows the efficient transfer of heat to drive the turbines. It shields the exterior of the reactor from neutron damage caused by the deuterium and tritium fuel. This is really important, seeing as you don't want to damage any sensitive instruments. And with the lithium in the solution, you can breed more tritium to fuel the reactor, a benefit very similar to Commonwealth's approach. To find out more, take a look at this episode. Now, the reason I have high hopes for this company, other than the fact that the science is sound and can be done with near-term technology, is that this isn't a paper reactor. General Fusion has conducted experiments, built out prototypes such as a full-scale plasma injector and a scale version of their piston-driven system. They have also developed their own electronic engineering department to build the systems that collect data on the science. While there's still a considerable amount of work to be done, a lot of the hard science behind this has been worked out. 
So you're probably thinking, okay, this is great, but what's the next step? Can we expect to see this bad boy operating anytime soon? Well, if you live in the UK, you're gonna see it sooner than you think. The UK Atomic Energy Authority and General Fusion have announced an agreement under which General Fusion will build and operate its fusion demonstration plant. This will be built on the UK Atomic Energy Authority's Cullen campus, located south of Oxford, and is expected to be a 70% scale prototype of what will soon be their commercial version. This project is a culmination of a decade's worth of research and development, and now the real work begins. Groundbreaking is expected to begin next year, with completion expected sometime around 2025. Once completed, this site will be used to further test the capabilities of magnetized target fusion. Now, with all this talk about science, we haven't really talked about the real driving force behind the construction, funding. Thankfully, General Fusion has plenty of it. Between grants from the Canadian government for research and private funds from tech CEOs like Jeff Bezos and Shopify founder Tobias Lutke, they have already raised over $100 million just to build the plant. After sufficient testing has been done, it is expected that this company will start rolling out commercial reactors by the early to mid 2030s. So there you have it, nuclear fusion near term. It may get here before advanced fission concepts hit the market globally. And honestly, this is something I'm okay with. Don't get me wrong, fission works great. I could go on for days of the advantages and we're still gonna need it even in a fusion economy, but whether it's fission or fusion, more nuclear energy near term is what we need soon. The next decade will truly be an exciting time to live in and I can't wait to get there. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this was Rock Logic.